Locally this Monday evening, a group of refugees living in St. Paul are refugees once more. The Red Cross and the local church are lending a hand. St. Paul residents are turning toward Minneapolis to help fight a plan to burn PCBs at NSP. And it's apparently take it or leave it time at the state capitol. Marsha Fleur is live at the capitol for the very latest on the budget crisis and workers' comp. We'll have those stories and more coming up in a moment on Eyewitness News. Hang on to your copy of Bernard's early bird book or pick one up at Menards. Here's 96 pages of unbelievable early bird specials. I couldn't even begin to tell you about them in such short time. But let me say this, by buying early, you'll really save big money this spring at Menards. This imperial ceiling fan is just one example. Save money, save energy. It's beautiful and it's yours for just $98 during Menards early bird sale. Save big money at Menards. These are the new Nature's Harvest Natural Breads, baked fresh daily here in the Twin Cities. They make bread and butter a delicious snack. They add interesting taste variety to your sandwiches. They make the breakfast toast something special. Eight varieties of whole grain bread with no preservatives, each with its own unique taste. Nature's Harvest Natural Breads, baked fresh daily in the Twin Cities. Dan and Body is a fit, trim body, so start a program of exercise and eating right and make Dan and Yogurt part of it. Everybody can get a Dan and Body. Who can? You can get a Dan and Body. Wow! Eyewitness News, the Northwest's most complete, comprehensive, and up-to-the-minute coverage with meteorologist Dennis Feltkin, sportscaster Rob Lear, and anchorman Stan Turner. Good evening, everyone. It was take it or leave it at the Minnesota Capitol today, and House Independent Republican leaders uh, took a walk when they couldn't get their way. Governor Cui continued to meet to privately with the remaining legislative leaders this afternoon. They're trying to solve the state's latest $229 million budget shortfall. Our government specialist, Marsha Floor, is live at the governor's office right now to explain today's, uh, I guess that would qualify as a fight, wouldn't it, Marsha? Well, not a fight. The beginnings of a fight, perhaps, Stan. The governor says it will be a mix of a tax increases, cuts and delayed payments, which will solve our latest budget crisis. Democrats of both houses agree, but today House Independent Republicans uh, came in and decided to lay a bargaining chip on the table. They want any budget agreement to include workers' comp reform. What I'm saying is that workers' comp, in my opinion, has to be a part of the package. Otherwise, there's no reason for people in my caucus to vote for it. They want to do something about economic recovery. And they're not interested in just raising taxes again. The last two times, it's been the same game plan. They come in, they negotiate, and, and they pass a tax increase. And my caucus is not going to buy in on just more taxes, more taxes, more taxes. They want to do something about the long-term recovery of the state's economy. Late Saturday, the House rejected a Senate workers' comp plan. IR saying it didn't give enough relief from the high cost of doing business in Minnesota. Some DFLers backing off because the plan reduced benefits to injured workers. Today, Governor Quee said he does not favor tying the budget to workers' comp reform. There is a committee that will be meeting tomorrow on workers' comp. The governor says if they come to an agreement, that will be fine. If not, it would just tie up the problem of solving the $229 million budget gap. This uh, group of the governor and uh, some independent Republicans from the Senate and House and Senate Democrats will meet again tomorrow. The governor says the door is open if the House independent Republicans should wish to return. But Representative Dave Jennings says he doubt that they will return until they get to the position of including a workers' comp solution with this budget. Stan. Okay, thank you, Marcia. With all the money troubles hounding state government, a businessman today offered his experience in finance and management. A Wheelock Whitney is his name. He's running for governor. He used to head the brokerage firm of Dane, Coleman and Quayle, and he says he's got the business background to help solve the state's financial problems. Whitney will be running in the September primary as an independent Republican, but he won't go after the party's endorsement at its convention in June. He says there just wasn't time to line up delegates for that, but he hopes his primary candidacy will give voters a choice in the governor's race.
In other news tonight, 28 Hmong refugees are homeless again this evening. Fire at a St. Paul apartment building yesterday forced them out of their home along with 16 other people. So the refugees are refugees once again. They have nowhere to go now, but Jay Shadler reports that local charities are helping out. Until yesterday, this apartment building on Marshall Street had been home to 28 Hmong refugees. But the blaze that ripped through here Sunday afternoon not only caused more than $100,000 worth of damage, it left the refugees once again in search of a home. This morning, the First Baptist Church in St. Paul became their newest refuge. Two dozen of the Hmong arrived here carrying what's left of their possessions, while the Red Cross worked on finding a more permanent home for them. The basement of the church is being used as a temporary shelter, with the Red Cross and a variety of other social agencies supplying some of the basic food and clothing needs. Most of the children, unaware of exactly what's happened to them, seem to be in reasonably good spirits. But not surprisingly, the faces of the parents show a deeper concern. Fifteen-year-old Chow Tao was the only person injured in the fire, having jumped from a second-floor window. An interpreter told us what happened. So he ran to the telephone and make a phone call, call police, I think. And uh, when he finished the uh, phone call, he can't get out the stairway, so he jumped out the window. There had been a flicker of hope earlier this morning that those left homeless by this fire might be able to move back into their apartments in the near future. But late this afternoon, the Red Cross was advised that that would not happen. The fire damage here at the apartment is just too extensive. So for the time being, for the 24 Hmong refugees, home will become the basement of the First Baptist Church. Jay Shadler, Channel 5 Eyewitness News in St. Paul. The Minnesota Pollution Control Agency says this may be their worst year yet for gasoline leaks at the state service stations. PCA says that thousands of gallons of gasoline are leaking from the storage tanks under stations, threatening the groundwater in some areas. In fact, right now, 92 stations are in the process of digging up and repairing their leaky tanks. The problem is that many of those tanks are finally corroding after being in the ground 25 years or more. As a result, the PCA has given up keeping track of just how much gasoline is actually seeping into the ground. Complete details tonight at 10 from our environmental specialist Tom Stewart. NSP still wants to burn toxic PCBs at its high bridge plant in St. Paul and that's got a lot of people scared about poisons in the air. NSP says no, it's safe, but opponents turn to Minneapolis officials for help. And today, a Minneapolis Council committee stopped just short of joining the opposition, but Lindsey Strand reports that it did ask the state to listen to all sides before deciding this volatile issue. It's a problem you can't see, and one that some people don't fear. Long before PCBs were known to be toxic and possibly cause cancer, Northern States Power was using the chemical in its transformers. Now the company wants to dispose of about 25,000 gallons of a PCB oil mixture each year by burning it at the High Bridge Power Plant in St. Paul. NSP has been shipping the contaminated oil to Alabama and Arkansas to be incinerated, but the companies received permission from the federal government to burn it here. NSP officials say it can be burned safely without contaminating the air, and they argue that it should be burned in the Twin City area instead of outstate because this is where it's generated. We see more and more that local communities do not want to have other people's waste. We see the time coming when other states may not accept these wastes for uh, incineration in their area. We feel that it's, it's appropriate for uh, the citizens of this area to, to do their part to solve the hazardous waste disposal problem. But opponents of even a test burn don't agree, and they're turning to city officials for support. Today, the Energy and Environment Committee of the Minneapolis City Council passed a resolution asking the state to postpone action on NSP's request. The committee wants the Pollution Control Agency to conduct a public hearing first. Minneapolis Alderman Kathy O'Brien is among the city officials lining up behind citizens against NSP. And I think it's, you know, a legitimate question for us to ask in terms of why are they being produced here and how, and for us to make jointly a decision about how they be, should be disposed. Last week, St. Paul City Council members passed a similar resolution and called for a blue ribbon committee to conduct a study of its own before the city council takes a position. The decision to burn PCBs at the High Bridge plant rests with the Pollution Control Agency Board, which will meet March 30th, and either accept the staff recommendation to grant NSP a test permit or schedule a public hearing before deciding the issue. Lindsey Strand, Channel 5 Eyewitness News, St. Paul.
If you've been worried about tampons and toxic shock syndrome, here's some news you should know about. Toxic shock is not caused, not caused by the chemicals in the tampons. That's what Mayo Clinic doctors say after studying the links between tampons and the mysterious illness. Statistics show that about 85% of all female victims had been using tampons when stricken by toxic shock. But the Mayo studies show that the chemicals in the tampons are not to blame. What is to blame? Well, that's still a mystery, and research continues into other possible causes. What's causing some concern in St. Paul is the annual shamrock invasion. That comes upon us Wednesday, and we'll talk about preparations for that next in Eyewitness News. This is to demonstrate that one gallon of Dual will treat three times the acres as one gallon of lasso, both at label rates. Soil, medium, organic matter, 2%. 1.8 acres, lasso runs out. But Dual has a unique molecular structure that lets one gallon treat 5.3 acres, more than any other grass herbicide for corn. Compare the cost per acre of Dual. You'll see, Dual is priced a meat competition. Minnesota Federal invites you to enjoy new elegance when you travel. Open or add to a savings account with a qualifying deposit and select from 16 beautiful pieces of designer luggage. A gift can also be yours when you start an IRA retirement plan or open a new daily interest checking account. Enjoy designer luggage free or at low savers prices when you save at any of the 38 convenient locations of Minnesota Federal. You can't beat the bear for fun or hams for great taste. I guess that's why hams is growing so fast. And for you light beer drinkers, is hams special light. Hams, beer refreshing. Hams, beer refreshing. Hams. I have to tell you about the great gift I got from Estee Lauder today. And you can get one too, filled with her famous beauty products. This whole Estee Lauder collection, an $18 value, is your gift with any Estee Lauder purchase of $7.50 or more. How great to have Estee Lauder treat you to Estee Lauder. Your Estee Lauder gift is available through March 27th at Dayton's Cosmetics. It is a source of pride for St. Paul, but also a cause for concern. The city's St. Patrick's Day Parade is the third largest in the country, with about 100,000 revelers marching or watching or doing a little bit of both. Police are always on hand to make sure those festivities don't get too far out of hand, but there'll be fewer police at this year's march on Wednesday. That's because of budget cuts. But our Libby Snymer reports the city is planning to spend $14,000 on police overtime as they prepare for the onslaught of the green. St. Patrick's Day is more than a celebration for the Irish. It is a rite of spring and members of all ethnic groups like to indulge and sometimes overindulge. This year, St. Paul police will have 22 fewer patrolmen on duty for the parade, but they say this won't make it difficult to control the crowds. Because we've had some experience with it now, we have a pretty good idea where we do have our problems. And by condensing uh, the officers into that area, I think we can probably handle it with less officers. Today, there were also preparations for St. Patty's Day in some of St. Paul's bars. They are expecting a bonanza. This bar will be open for business at 8 a.m. on St. Patrick's Day, and the management expects 5,000 people to come through here before it closes at 1 in the morning. I do about three weeks of business in one day. Earning that extra money does take a lot of hard work. Really, I think, figure the waitresses should really wear the shoulder pads and stuff like that, for like the hockey players. That way we can get through and everything else. But we have a very fun time. Not all Irish people think St. Patrick's Day is just a fun time. Many believe the celebration of drinking projects a negative image of the Irish. Drunkenness, rowdyism. Jim Kennedy represents the oldest organized Irish group in St. Paul. And, uh, this, this is not the true Irishman. I'm uh, sure we enjoy a drink as much as anyone else does, but uh, it does not project the, uh, the image of the hard-working Irishman that came over here and settled this country. 73-year-old Bob Gallivan doesn't agree. True, he does own a bar. He founded it at another location 50 years ago, St. Patrick's Day. He is also a founding member of the St. Patrick's Society. 
Do you find that it gives a bad name to Irishmen? <laughs> you know, <laughs> they never bother me any. <laughs> Why would it give me would give an Irishman a bad name? I think it's the amateur Irish that probably give him a bad name. You know, the, the amateur Irish always want to be Irish just on one day. The true Irishman doesn't really get out of hand on, on St. Patrick's Day. This year, organizers of the parade are presenting it as a family-oriented event. Because of that, some Irish groups that boycotted the festivities in past years will be participating on Wednesday. Libby Snymer, Channel 5 Eyewitness News in St. Paul. We have some good news for drivers irritated by the recent scrambling for parking space in Minneapolis. It's over at 6 tonight, just a few minutes ago, wasn't it? The city lifted its emergency parking restrictions. On February the 3rd, it was that Mayor Fraser banned parking on the even-numbered sides of the city streets. That made it easier for emergency vehicles to get through the snow-clogged streets. Now, the pre-spring thaw has melted much of the snow, and the ban's no longer necessary. So now, you can park on both sides of the residential streets in Minneapolis once again, Hallelujah. We trust that move in the Minneapolis was not premature. Uh, wasn't that snow yeah, yeah, outside today, Mr. Dennis? <laughs> well, Dennis will tell us if uh, winter has any surprises for us in just a second. Only one corn herbicide was specifically designed for incorporation. Sutan Plus, the most dependable way to control annual grass in corn. You can apply and incorporate it in one thorough trip. Works in any weather. Forms a three-inch weed barrier that stays put wet or dry. Sutan Plus vaporizes and spreads through the soil. The one designed to be incorporated. Sutan Plus, the best incorporated corn herbicide. Because we care at Bob Ryan, we offer extended service hours through 7 p.m. and free loaner cars. We're proud that the name Bob Ryan is synonymous with award-winning service, and we plan to keep it that way. And that same quality service is now available at the new Bob Ryan Ford across from Ridgedale, where we're proud of our new store, our modern service department, and our great selection of new and used cars and trucks. We at Bob Ryan believe nobody will sell you a car or truck for less. So shop all over if you wish, but before you buy, see us. You won't be disappointed. We promise. Welcome to a season that dazzles the imagination. The Metropolitan Opera Spring Tour. Come see and hear the orchestra and chorus, the sets and costumes, and the international stars of this national treasure. The Metropolitan Opera. Imagine Rigoletto, the Magic Flute, Madam Butterfly, plus four additional Grand Opera classics all on the Northrop stage. Phone the Northrop ticket office today for brochure and order blank. All IRAs are not alike. So what's behind your Northwestern Bank's unique individual retirement accounts? Big advantages. You get high yields. You get interest compounded daily. You can open your Northwestern IRA with no minimum investment. All with no service charges. None. That's what you get with our insured IRAs. So why not come in and get one? We'll design a unique IRA just for you. Come into your Northwestern Bank. Come in from the confusion. Well, if you're not a snow fan, you got a wee bit of a shock when you looked out this morning. That funny white stuff was yeah, flying around. Yeah, it was around. There. The temperatures yeah. were cool enough this morning to do it. In fact, the color radar at 8 o'clock was showing a little bit of light snow just to the northwest of the Twin Cities, but it didn't hang around very long. In fact, as we roll this time lapse along, it gathered some steam in the western suburbs and moved across the northern metropolitan area, then zipped right up towards Duluth, and as far as the Twin Cities was concerned, it was over for a while. A live radar right now around the Twin Cities and western Wisconsin and much of Minnesota. All we're seeing is ground targets. No significant precipitation is taking place, but later tonight, we expect a band of rain to begin spreading up across our region. And the Almanac officially just a trace today out at the airport. The high was 38. The overnight low was 33. Not much range in those temperatures because of the warm flow of air and the cloud cover. And we're overcast right now, and the airport's reporting a little drizzle. It's 37 with a dew point close to that. So there's a lot of moisture in the air, and we have some fog. We have a humidity of 85%. The winds are southeast to 12, and the pressure is starting to get low again as it continues to fall. Remember yesterday we had some sunshine, and then things began changing during the day? Well, the area of high pressure, which was producing the sunshine and the warmer temperatures, continues to move on to the east, and replacing it is a major late winter, early springtime storm. This one is controlling the weather across everything west of the Mississippi River. 
The main storm center itself is now in east central Wyoming. Back in the cold air, we have some snow falling. Up to a foot is expected in the central Rockies. But right now, the real problem from this storm is a severe weather outbreak. This storm is a classic one, pulling up the warm and muggy tropical air out of the Gulf of Mexico. The cold air is meeting it. We have some help in the upper level area, the jet stream running right over it. And the end result has been a line of severe thunderstorms breaking out. And from those severe thunderstorms, we have tornadoes in Oklahoma and Kansas. Let me show you the satellite loop. This is for the last eight hours across the center part of the country. And here's the storm system. You can see the circulation in the northern Rockies. But look what happens when the cool air is meeting the warm air. See the line of thunderstorms forming right through here? Well, the Severe Storms Forecast Center expected an outbreak of severe weather. All day today, they've been maintaining a moderate risk of severe thunderstorms from Texas all through the mid-Mississippi Valley and right on up into lower Illinois and southwestern Indiana. And right now, we have two tornado watch areas covering parts of Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, even a little section of southwestern Iowa. I mentioned tornadoes. Well, on the Wide Area Radar Network, the National Weather Service radar from Oklahoma City, Kansas, is showing that Oklahoma City area is showing some uh, thunderstorms, and a few of those are severe. In fact, here's a close-up right around the Oklahoma City area, if we have that. And this particular cell just between Oklahoma City and Norman, that is a tornado on the ground right now moving on to the northeast. But so far, we've had no reports of any damage. And a little bit further to the north, Wichita is showing a severe line of thunderstorms as well. And late this afternoon, there was a tornado reported just to the west of Emporia. No damage reported out of that, fortunately. All of this will clear out once some cool air gets moving into it. And low temperatures last night show a little cool air up to the northwest and as that storm gets organized it'll continue moving on towards the southeast now little tricky situation for us this storm is expected to move to the east and wind up in east central wyoming by tomorrow afternoon if it takes that track and doesn't get any stronger we'll be right on the rain snow line we'll have a further update the, on this at 10 o'clock i think it may change our forecast right now for tonight and tomorrow calls for fog and kind of drizzly conditions early this evening, but rain is likely later tonight through tomorrow. Temperatures will be steady tonight, up to highs tomorrow of 37 to 42. Tomorrow night, rain changing to snow as the colder air starts moving in, 26 to 32. Wednesday, snow ending a cooler, 31 to 36. Chance of measurable precipitation jumps up to 70% tonight through tomorrow, down to 40% Wednesday. The outlook, nice on Thursday, partly cloudy warmer Friday. Maybe another storm for the weekend. Okay, thank you, Denny. The Gopher basketball team. Well, they've been lucky, haven't they? They've been preparing for the increasingly tough competition in the NCAA tournament. And the Minnesota Twins are looking at a prospect, a prospect with an upper Midwest name and a propensity for hitting home runs. Bob Bruce has that spring training report from Orlando, and Rob Lear brings us Eyewitness Sports in just a moment. I've used Lasso for about 10 years now, and it hasn't failed me yet. I'm Bob Smith, and last spring I saw firsthand why so many farmers are using surface blend and lasso herbicide. I've got good control with the surface blending. You just make one pass across the field, you're saving fuel and time. You're saving uh, time and also uh, conserving soil moisture. Lasso just does it when it's surface blend. They're making believers out of a lot of farmers, surface blend and lasso. We're going to take a bite out of this apple to make a point. When your company has a Delta Dental Plan, your family can have regular dental checkups and other necessary dental services, yet you'll probably never see a big dental bill again. And that's the point. With Delta Dental, you can continue to take good, healthy bites out of things you like to eat without having dental costs take big bites out of you. Isn't it time you had a Delta Dental Plan where you work? Farming is a risky business. Careful. You have to carefully consider every move you make. Easy. There are dangers in expanding your operation. Risks in marketing your crop more aggressively. Watch it. A slip could mean disaster. So isn't it comforting to know you have all-risk crop insurance with you every step of the way? You call for an overnight package delivery. The Giant answers. You go to sleep. The Giant goes to work. Coast to coast, city to city, Purolator Courier, The Giant, makes over 28 million overnight package deliveries a year. The sun comes out. The Giant comes in. No need to worry. The Giant delivers. Purolator Courier, The Giant of the overnight package delivery business.
Bob Lear is sitting in tonight because our far-flung sports department is uh, flung pretty far tonight. We are all over the yeah, place. Let's start in Indianapolis, okay. Stan. The Gopher basketball team went through a short workout today, just 24 hours after their season almost came to a crashing halt. Minnesota survived a scare from Tennessee Chattanooga yesterday in the second round of the Mideast Regionals, and Channel 5's Larry Burnett was in Indianapolis and has this report. It was round two of the Mideast Regionals at Market Square Arena in Indianapolis, and it featured Mr. Tucker and a Mr. White in yesterday's first half between the Gophers and Tennessee Chattanooga. Minnesota's Trent Tucker hit for 14 points in the opening stanza, while number 44, Willie White, put on a show of his own, hitting nine of 11 shots as the two teams seesawed with the lead. He, with a little edge, and he wanted to, to go out and get it done too fast. And we forgot all about the team concept of the game. And luckily, the shots that I threw them in the first half, they fell in to keep us pretty close. If those shots hadn't fell in, or it, it could have been even a longer day for us. We were a bit impatient because we haven't played in so long, you know, and uh, it just took a while before we can get back in the groove of things. The game was tied five times in the last five minutes of the first half, but Tennessee Chattanooga took a 36-34 lead going into intermission. The Gophers came on strong in the second second half, however, and earned a trip to Birmingham, Alabama. The Gophers were down but not out in the second half. Minnesota blew numerous opportunities to move in front, and it wasn't until less than a minute remained that Randy Brewer gave the Gophers a 62-61 lead. Tennessee Chattanooga had a chance to go ahead, but center Rush Shaney missed this one up close, and the Gophers had a 62-61 heart-stopping victory. It wasn't very pretty, but it did put a scare into the team, and the Gophers may be better off in Birmingham because of it. Those kind of have to help you, and as you know, we've had so many of those, the Purdue game, the Iowa game, and uh, the Michigan State game, and now this game, that we're kind of used to functioning in, in those uh, situations. That performance tonight is not going to be Louisville. You know, we're not, we're not fooled by that. We're going to have to play much, much better than that, but I think we will. The Gophers will leave Wednesday for Birmingham, where they will meet Louisville for a slot in the Mideast Regional Championship game. Larry Burnett, Channel 5 Eyewitness Sports in Indianapolis. With 10 games left to play in their regular season, the magic number for the Minnesota North Stars is 8. 8 points will clinch for Minnesota the Norris Division Championship and home ice for the upcoming playoffs. 2 points can be picked up tonight when the North Stars entertain the Pittsburgh Penguins at the Met at 7 o'clock. Going into this one, the North Stars take an 11 game unbeaten streak. Well, the Twins have finally cracked the win column in their uh, sixth spring training try at Coco, Florida today. Gary Ward hit a home run as the Twins beat the Houston Astros 3-2. Home runs seem to be a commodity the Twins might have this season. At least one guy who's trying to make the team traffics in them. In his first of a series of report from spring training, here's Bob Bruce. All week long in our spring training reports from Florida, we'll be telling you about the players that will comprise the Twins' youngest team ever. Now, some of those players I'm sure you've heard of, like Ken Herbick and Gary Gaetti, but there are more, including Randy Johnson, who just may turn out to be the big surprise of this year's spring training. Johnson's power has already caught the eye of the Twins' decision-makers. In yesterday's 9-6 loss to Toronto, he had four RBIs and two of his three hits wound up on the far side of the right field fence. While one good game certainly won't guarantee Randy a job with the Twins, a number of spots are open, and a left-handed hitter with power should be tailor-made for the Metrodome. Well, we are looking for a few people, you know, left-handed hitters, to hit in our ballpark in the Dome. and. Uh, if we can come back with maybe a couple left-hand hitters on our line, it's, it's going to help us in the dome, Bob. Johnson came to the Twins in the deal that sent Jerry Kuzma to the White Sox near the end of last season. The 23-year-old outfielder played double-A ball in 1981. This is his first good chance to crack a major league roster, and the key, he says, is to forget about the pressure and just concentrate on playing the game. If you start thinking, well, you know, this guy on second base, you got to get him over or try to get him in, you know, it just confuses you, messes you all up. For Randy Johnson, spring training is a new experience, but the annual trek south, well, now that's been a tradition in Major League Baseball for nearly a century. We'll have more on that story for you tonight at 10. In Orlando, Florida, this is Bob Bruce reporting for Eyewitness Sports. Refreshing stand to see signs of baseball. We'll hear yeah, from Bob all week long. Great. Okay, Rob, thank you. Well, here's something for you. If you've got a bank or credit union savings account, better listen to this. You may have to start paying withholding taxes on your interest. Yep, the IRS thinks that a lot of people who get interest and dividend income are not reporting it for taxes at the end of the year. So they want to start treating your interest like your weekly paycheck. But will the IRS get its way? Our money specialist, Dennis Moore, will have the full report tonight on the 10 o'clock edition of Iowa. News. Hope to see you then. Good night.
hardworking people have one thing in common. One day they'll retire. And that's why a First Bank IRA is so important to them. I started an IRA at my First Bank because there was no opening fee. High yield. I get a good return on my investment and I know it's secure. Since there's no minimum, I open my IRA with what I could afford. Stop in your First Bank to find out more about our IRA, the way hardworking people make retirement worth working for.